is a game I really shouldn't review. Um, this is a perfect example of uh, why if you don't really uh, get to play any of these games back then, it's really hard to review them. Because I've had a quick go at this game, uh, just to make sure the joystick is in the right port, uh, just to make sure everything's working. And you know what? People really love this game. This is a 1983 game. And that's the problem. I never had this game. I know I would have loved this game, and I know if I had this game in 1983, then today I'd be like really happy that I found this on a disc labelled uh, Commodore 1541 uh, Utilities and Demos. There you go. After you finish the lining your uh, disk drive, why not test it out by loading uh, a 39k PRG uh, crack, that's a single file crack of uh, Super Pipeline with no intro. The best kind of uh, pirate copy. And that's really a thing. Now, I've, I've been through all the other discs and you know, I've done all the videos for that. I don't think there's anything else. Oh, Zaxxon won't load. So if I've never done uh, Zaxxon already on the SX64, then you're a bit fucked really. But, uh, but yeah, I noticed this game on the uh, disc. I was actually looking for uh, discs that were in uh, good condition so I could uh, format them or e erase the files on them and you know use them to back up the other games and that's the thing really that's what really struck me I was like there's nothing wrong with this game at all it's, it's above average in almost every way for a 1983 game I mean, you know, a few games are going to be uh, manic minor levels of perfect. For that kind of year, or Beachhead. But it's a fun game. It's programmed damn well for the time. A lot better than uh, early games by Jeff Minter, which Leonard Tramiel likes. Uh, and that probably explains why Atari went tits up as soon as uh, Jack Trammell handed over to his sons. Not that Jack Trammell was particularly uh, savvy with either technology or interested in computer games in any way. Possibly not even edutainment. He just wanted people to have a computer for the best possible price. So yeah, like I was saying, the uh, music is uh, really good. I had two games in 1983. Now the trick with this game is you really, <coughs> you really need to uh, get the guy going up the ladder as soon as you get on the screen. Because this is only my second go, I've kind of forgotten that. But that's quite important. And then from there on, you'll see the problem with this game. Which is probably why uh, Super Pipeline 2 is slightly different. There's no ladder and rivets in the ceiling. Um, so that's what's better about Super Pipeline 2. 
So really, the acid test is, is it better than uh, Xylagon? Is it better than Punchy? Well, Punchy is a rip-off of, um, I was going to say, uh, Hunchback. And uh, it's very good, I actually prefer it. So you walk along the pipes and uh, you have to stop the guys getting up the ladder to drop the, uh, well I don't know what they are, they could be spikes, they basically put a hole in the, uh, in the pipes, that's the thing. And your little guy there, he's the one who fixes the uh, damage to the pipes. So a typical 1970s uh, attitude, there's a foreman that does, does fuck all really. Or firefighting I suppose. Yeah, the uh, helpers are unlimited as far as I know. You won't run out of them. And you only have to get to a thousand litres, I presume, into the uh, barrel. It's got Pac-Man style uh, things going on there. So, so now we've missed him, we've kind of fucked it up. So that's a problem now. That's even more of a problem now because I have to go back and get him without touching uh, any of the enemies that are falling from the uh, ceiling. That's, that first shot is very important. And really you want to get as close to them as possible there. And when it's clear, get as close to the ladder as possible. Now the crabs and lobsters, you can shoot the uh, little crabs. There's one coming up there. But, um, Like I said, it doesn't matter if you lose your guy there, he can stay there and stop the lobsters coming from the start of the pipeline. Oh great, litter tray time. Hold your breath everyone. <laughs> so you can get quite far with this uh, simple trick. So it suffers the same sort of tricks that uh, simple tricks, once you know them, Ah yes, see you've got the little uh, things now. Uh, you can stay on the uh, pipes and shoot. A very nice game, I have to say. No, I'm going the wrong way there, mad. It's very polished. Very good for uh, 1983. It's very playable, um, but like I say, I, I didn't have this back in the day, so it's very difficult for me to like go back and play this for like you know half an hour or an hour or something. I will have a few more goes. But uh, this, this game really highlights um, the, the problem with retro gaming reviews, really. I had a C64 at the start of 1983. And, you know, I've got an idea of what 1983 games were like. And really, the situation there is... Um, if this game was early 1983, 
I can really only compare it to three games. Xylagon, uh, Punchy or Beachhead, or Manic Miner. Now, I don't think there's a 1983 game as good as Manic Miner in terms of how many hours you'll play it for your life. There's that. And a uh, little Coco there, heroin chic Coco, is uh, telling me that she can eat, eat her dinner later. And if you don't know how cats actually say that, well they don't say it, they indicate it, then uh, you'll have to look that up. And good luck with that one. Oof. Loads of fucking idiot websites you'll have to go through. But yeah, anyway. You know, today you can play this game while smoking yeah, fairly well. Once you know the trick. And as I was saying, there, there's a trick with most games. Uh, famously, with uh, Critical Mass, very difficult game until you realise all you've got to do is fly to the east. Uh, the point you've got to get to is always to the east. So, once you know that, the game becomes a lot easier and simpler than you thought it was. So, if I hadn't instantly seen that uh, you just have to like stop the guys going up the ladder, and you can, and uh, really. I would have enjoyed the game a lot more, or possibly uh, found it much more challenging. But that's really basically why I guess people prefer Super Pipeline 2, because they've removed the uh, rivets from the ceiling and the ladder on the side with the guys going up and the uh, crabs and things. And they've just put them on the actual pipes as if it's like a maze game and you can only go on the maze. Not Pac-Man, you know, like a proper maze. But that is a problem. That's a real problem that is for, um, for YouTube in general because, um, you know, when people uh, talk about retro gaming, Experts, I hope you can see the air quotes, motherfuckers, I hope you can see me giving them the finger. Um, you get like, uh, you know, big shows like Expos, and you get fucking idiots on there talking about it. You know, people who had a fucking uh, Amstrad CPC just before I got a fucking uh, Japanese Sega Saturn or something. That's not right, mate. You know, it's too late for Nintendo in that in that time. There's no fucking uh, fighting game better than Virtual Fighter 2 on the uh, SNES or the Mega Drive. I don't care what you say, there just isn't. And, uh, you know, these people are reviewing uh, fucking 8-bit games. But, you know, even me, I have a problem reviewing this game because I basically just didn't play it back then. Never played it. That's the first time I ever played it. The second time I ever played it is here on the camera. And I know it's a great game, but I can't really review it, which is a real problem, because like most 1983, 84 games, it's quite a simple game. And once you know the trick, it's probably, you know, how people who review Critical Mass and they give it, you know, a shit score. Basically, because uh, they didn't have it as a kid. And as soon as they've uh, started playing it now, today, in this uh, decade, they know the trick. Or well, they've worked it out straight away. You know, and uh, so if I can't review this game, what the fuck is uh, Top Twat Gaming, Nostalgia Turd, it's a fucking you know, DJ Dope, famously can't tell the difference between uh, Space Harrier 1 and 2 on the Amiga, which look completely fucking different. 
what Wikipedia didn't make it obvious, maybe Wikipedia got the screenshots the wrong way around. But that's the history of uh, Space Harrier and the home convergence, is it? You fucking muppet. So yeah, so um, me thinks it's time for Blue Max. But yeah, that's uh, definitely a game that's uh, staying in the uh, door pocket business of the SX64. And discs do fit in there, uh, Jesus rocks, you just have to turn them 90 degrees. That's all. Well, Wikipedia didn't tell them that. He's supposed to uh, be big on the uh, Commodore. Well, it should be, he's fucking American. One of the best home computers ever made. And it's American, so all Americans who do retro game reviews, including 8-bit games, should know about the C64. If they don't, they can't be reviewing anything other than whatever it is they had as a kid. Probably the NES. Some of them had a Master System. Even if you had a PC engine, you're a bit fucked in America because uh, Street Fighter 2 didn't come out on the PC engine in America. Isn't that weird? Yeah, that's what we've got to do. So, yeah, I mean, um, like I was saying, it's um, a billion times better than Xylagon. Uh, is it better than Punchy? Well, no. Because Punchy has like 15 levels and there's loads of different things you've got to do on top of that. And the levels do look fairly different. So, would you play it more often than Beachhead? No. So, you know, Punchy and Beachhead are two of the uh, best games. Would you play it more than Manic Miner? Well, once you get stuck on level 12 of Manic Miner, and you get fed up trying to get to that level without even losing a life again, uh, possibly uh, it might catch up if you live to 150. I'm not sure about that one. Um, so yeah, that's really the situation. It's not a bad game. There are much worse games in 1983. There are horrible, horrible games in 1983. The sprites are nice, the animation is nice, the music is nice, it's well presented. The game controls are good. Um, there's nothing to fault it, actually. And there ends the review because I'm playing Blue Max now.